Wednesday, everyone! Our scripture reading for today would be coming from 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 23. Okay, let's all read. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless us all upon the reading of this word. Let us all bow down our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us to come together and study your scripture once again. May you open our minds and hearts to your word for us today. We ask that these words of truth and life would continue to impact us in the week ahead, especially in this time of uncertainties. We lift this prayer in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Good morning, brothers and sisters at KBCF. Kamusta kayo? Hope you are well. We thank the Lord for another opportunity to study His Word. We are going through the series about peace. The message I was assigned this morning is entitled, May the God of Peace Sanctify You Entirely, based on 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. We will be focusing more on the God of peace and what he can and will do in our sanctification. Why don't we ask him to guide us in this study? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the God of peace, we come before you, your holy throne, and thank you for your word that we will study today. Please illumine our minds soften our hearts, and prepare us to respond accordingly. Please change us to be like your son, Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever wandered around a construction site? Were you able to see warning signs like, caution, when equipment working, or caution, work in progress? It's not a place where you want to be, right? You'd rather go to the finished building. When you notice the name of the architect and the company building it, especially if well known, you are sure that the project will turn out beautiful. In the meantime, there's a lot of noise. There's clutter, debris, and mud all around. We think, when will this building be completed? My family and I had the opportunity to visit one of the famous landmarks in New York in 2006, the World Trade Center, or what used to be the WTC. Yes, you're right, the place where the Twin Towers once stood, but was destroyed in the 9-11 attacks. In 2006, the new One World Trade Center construction had just begun. There was nothing much more to see except the fences, the equipment, the caution signs, and there was the noise of construction. It was a work in progress. As Christians, we are a work in progress as well. We are still under construction. God is at work in shaping and molding us. And so in our moments of weakness, when we snap and get angry and shout at someone, when we return to those old bad habits, when we fall into temptation, sometimes we just want to give up, right? Don't give up. God is not finished with us yet. You and I are God's masterpieces, and time will come when we will all be changed and become perfect like Christ. That is what sanctification is. What is sanctification? The generic meaning of sanctification is the state of proper functioning. To sanctify someone or something is to set that person or thing apart for the use intended by its designer. The Greek word translated sanctification is hagiasmos, it means holiness. To sanctify, therefore, means to make holy. God calls his people to be holy 
as he is holy. And we see that in Matthew 5 and verse 14. Another word for a holy person is saint or hagios, meaning a sanctified one. There are three stages of the believer's sanctification that we as Christians will go through. When we become born again, and that is when we are justified. So that's the first stage, justification, where we are delivered from the penalty of sin. The next stage as we live our lives here on earth is sanctification, where we experience the changing work of God. Little by little, we become more like Jesus and we are delivered from the power of sin. And then the final stage is glorification. So we go through justification, sanctification, and the ultimate sanctification is glorification, where we are delivered from the presence of sin. And this will happen when Jesus Christ comes again and takes us all to be with him. Now let's go to our verse for today. It's in First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your holy, your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that God himself is described as the God of peace. And it is he who will sanctify the believer entirely through and through, as the verse says. The verse goes on to say that our whole spirit, soul, and body falls roundabout way of referring to the whole person. The whole person will be sanctified or kept blameless at the coming of Christ. And this was Paul's prayer for the Thessalonian believers in 51 AD, where the church was largely Gentile although the church had some Jews there. And he wrote this in view of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 12 to 15. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 15 says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak and be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. When Paul said, live in peace with each other, there were perhaps ongoing conflicts among the brethren, between the leaders and those under them. When believers do not submit or obey their leaders, problems happen. Another source of conflict was that there were idle persons who think that they should not work anymore since Christ is coming. They were idle. Paul urged them to encourage uh, to the disheartened, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. Apparently, they got angry pretty quickly when people tell them that they should not just be sitting around. And then some people are vindictive, paying back wrong for wrong. Such were the believers in Thessalonica. They were still works in progress, and so are we today. They were still going through the process of sanctification. And so are we today. Now, what does the God of peace want us to know and do regarding sanctification? Sanctification is a broad subject, but for our study, we will use several verses. In particular, we will look up several verses with the phrase, the God of peace, as it pertains to sanctification and what God can do for us. There are three things that the God of peace wants us to know 
and do with regard to sanctification. Firstly, believe he will complete in us the work of sanctification. The God of peace wants us to know that he will finish the building project in us. And he wants us to believe that. Let us look at the verse again. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that the God of peace will ensure that we are blameless when Christ returns. Paul's prayer shows that this desire can be lifted up in prayer to God with whom nothing is impossible. There's another verse that we will look at, and that is 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. He will change us into the image of Christ. Did you see that? We are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Every building project has a blueprint. Our blueprint is based on the image of Christ. Isn't that exciting? We will become like Jesus and share in his resurrected glory. Here's another verse, Philippians 1, verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He started sanctification to our salvation and will complete this when Christ returns. The God of peace started the work of sanctification when we trusted in Jesus as Savior and Lord. On the day we accepted him, the day we were born again, on our spiritual birthday. And this is just the beginning. And we know from Philippians 1 verse 6 that God, what God has started, he will complete. When we see the finished building project, we are awestruck. Sometimes we say, "Ang bilis ginawa nito ah." No longer is there the noise of construction. No more unsightly mud and debris. The building is just magnificent. Last year, our family had the opportunity to return to the WTC site. We were awestruck. The finished building project. The new One World Trade Center is just fantastic. As this is it, an age of selfies, I took one with the building in the background. But I noticed myself with the signs of aging, the eye wrinkles and the eye bags. That is why I look forward to Christ's coming when I will be transformed. Not only I, but all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does the finished work of God look like? The finished work of God in us will mean that we shall be like Jesus in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Jesus rose from the grave. He had a body that was glorified. The same Jesus who ascended to heaven will return with the same body and we shall be like him. The finished work of God in us means that we will be clothed with immortality in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, meaning we will not all die, as Paul told the Corinthian believers. But we will all be changed. In verse 52, he repeated that we will be changed. In verse 53, for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. There will be no more death, for we shall live with the Lord forever. 
and in heaven there is no more death. The finished work of God in us will show that we'll be transformed. Our bodies will be changed. Look at Philippians 3, 20 and verse 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to, to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. No more wrinkles, no more beer bellies, no more white hairs. Waha! Wow. No more need for whitening, beautifying, and anti-aging products and maintenance pens. Uh, no more sickness. That is why an earnest pair of believers is Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The finished work of God also means that we'll be perfect in speech and in the mind. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 to 11. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, or perfection, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Paul was telling that perfection will come uh, when the Lord Jesus comes again. Isn't this something to look forward to? We'll be changed in spirit, soul, and body. The important thing is that we are in Christ. Have you trusted him as your savior? Do that today. Tomorrow might be too late. In our sanctification, the God of peace wants us to believe in him, that he will complete the work. Secondly, he wants us to trust in him to provide what we need in sanctification. When Paul prayed for the Thessalonians, for God to keep them blameless until the coming of Christ, that means God will also provide what we need as we go through life on earth and as we go through sanctification. However, we are faced with this reality. In the path of sanctification, we will experience temptations, trials, and tests. God is changing us every day, but the reality of the Christian life is not a straight line upwards. Our Christian life is a series of victories, defeats, high points and lows, wonderful times and times of agony, right? Christianity is indeed a bed of roses with many thorns. There's a verse that we quote when we face trials, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. But often we forget the next verse, in Romans 8, 29, for those God for you, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. God uses the good and the bad in the work of sanctification for us to be conformed to the image of Christ. What will God provide as we go through sanctification? Let's see Hebrews 13 verses 20 to 21. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every, everything good for doing his will. Notice that he will provide us everything good for doing his will. The God of peace will do this. So when we are faced with temptations, trials, and tests, we can be sure that God will help us. Another verse is in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Referring to God, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him 
who called us by his own glory and goodness. God will provide us everything we need to live a godly life. God set us apart, made us holy, as he's in the process of making us like Christ. Why? So that we can witness for him, for his glory. That is our intended purpose, to glorify him in everything that we do. And that includes being witnesses in this dark world. So that when people observe our lives, they would want to know God and even receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. What did God give us to enable us to live a holy life? God gave us the Holy Spirit who helps us in our time of weakness and intercedes for us. God also gave us the Holy Scriptures or the Bible which is the sword of the spirit that helps us in our spiritual battles, as we see in Ephesians 6, 17. You know, my experience before I became a Christian, I was a vindictive person. If someone would do something wrong to me, I'll be sure that I'd be able to repay uh, that person with something bad. So I was always raving for vengeance. But when I became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and read Romans 12 and verse 19 that says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. I was convicted in my heart. And I confessed this to him. And little by little, uh, God changed me. Now, when someone would do wrong to me, I pray to God and exercise the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and patience. That is the work of God in me. Of course, this would only happen if we are spending time in the Word. Are you spending time reading the Bible every day? Another thing that God gave us is the church, composed of our fellow believers. Believers to encourage and strengthen us and even rebuke us. To place us back on the right track. Are you part of a small group, a cell group? Are you submitting yourselves to uh, the leadership, the, the elders, the pastors? Way back in the 1990s, Amy and I uh, were just newly married and I committed a, a blunder. Uh, well, it was an, almost an indiscretion. But if I continued with that, I would have uh, fallen. But praise God, the pastors of KBCF rebuked me soundly. And uh, I was placed back on the right track. That's why we need to obey our spiritual leaders, our cell group leaders, our elders and pastors. Another thing that God gave us, the spiritual gifts. And we use this to serve one another. Are you using your spiritual gifts to serve others? One mark of Christ's likeness is servanthood. And another thing, and this is the last on the list that I am, the forgiveness of sins. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we fall, God is there waiting for us to come back to him, to confess our sins to him. And he will forgive us and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Let's continue. The God of peace wants us to believe him that he will firstly complete in us the work of sanctification. Secondly, he wants us to trust him to provide what we need as we go through sanctification. Thirdly, he wants us to obey him to experience his presence as we go through sanctification. Although sanctification is God's work, he wants our cooperation. 
He wants us to obey. Let's see Philippians 4, um, verses 7 to 9. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. His presence is sure when we put into practice what is good. Notice that this is the assurance of the God of peace. He said, and Paul said, and the God of peace will be with you when we put into practice everything that is good. Another verse is in 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be. God's presence is sure when we do what promotes unity and peace. The God of peace will be with us. But here, he is also known as the God of love. Where there is love, there is peace. If we want God's presence to be with us, live in unity and peace with one another. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. And there are three words here. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So notice that the three words, spirit, soul, and body, is man a tripartite being or a bipartite or two-part being, whatever. God will sanctify us entirely. But for our purposes, let us use the three words. There are these are the three areas that we could glorify or serve God. In the path of sanctification, we are to glorify or serve Him in these areas. Perceive the Spirit. That's why we have to make sure that we have experienced the second birth. John 3.3 3. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. John 3, verse 6, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Before we can even glorify or serve God, we need to be born spiritually. Have you experienced the second birth? Speak to a pastor or church leader or send a message to the KBCF website if you want to know how to be born again. Now, how do you glorify the Lord in the area of your spirit? You testify. You share your testimony of how God has been good to you and how God changed you. Just like Mary in Luke chapter 2 where she said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. And uh, towards the latter part of that passage in Luke chapter 2, Mary uh, recounted how God had been faithful and good to her. Now, we also serve God in the area or glorify Him in the area of our, our soul. Our soul includes the mind, will, and emotion. I learned that actually from Puya uh, Roli uh, Manuel. And we are to feed the mind. Romans 12, chapter 2, uh, 12, verse 2, rather. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Some say that it all begins in the mind. What we feed it. We feed it with good things, then how comes good? We feed it with bad things, garbage in, garbage out. 
what are you feeding your mind? How about more of God's Word, the Bible? The third area where we can glorify or serve God is the body. We are to use our bodies for Godly purposes. Romans 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. How can we offer our bodies as a pleasing sacrifice? We worship God. We serve Him. We glorify Him in our bodies. So we use our bodies for God's glory. There you have it. In the work of sanctification by the God of peace, believe Him to complete this work in us. Trust Him to provide what we need and obey Him to experience His presence. As I close, I will use 1 Thessalonians 5.23 as our prayer for our sanctification. Yours and mine, we are all works in progress. May the God of peace sanctify us through and through, and may our whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, my dear brethren at KBCF. I hope to see you in person sometime in the future under better circumstances. Thank you. Beloved KBCF family, one of my reflections during this pandemic is that the problem is not dying with COVID-19. The problem is dying without Jesus Christ. 
A sad reality in our churches today is that only 7% actively share their faith. And we need to change that. We need to challenge ourselves. Let's spark a lifestyle of prayer, evangelism, and discipleship today. Because I believe God has revealed His deep compassion for the lost. And as His followers, we can share the hope and the love of Christ. Reach out to your friends, uh, neighbors, colleagues, and family members through phone, social media, and the internet. Your testimony can change somebody's life forever. So today, let me introduce to you our online evangelism and discipleship material. So just follow these six simple steps. First, pray and commit. Pray for specific people God wants for you to reach out to. So participate or enlist. Sa page 8 po, may kita niyo po sa material na meron pong sign up form. Okay? So just list down three names. It can be your friends, kapitbahay, or madalas yung kachat sa Facebook. And pray for them daily for a week. That's very important, mga kapatid. Second step is connect. Initiate contact using available means. So, pwedeng phone call, SMS, kung may Viber kayo, you can use that. Messenger, Twitter, or Instagram, or email, it's up to you. Okay? And third step is disclose. Open up and share your own life experience and lead them to deep spiritual conversations. Uh, you, you may prepare or write personal testimony in advance. May guide po tayo sa page 4. And as you know, as the relationship develops, your openness is reciprocated and the relationship becomes more meaningful and genuine. Yun yung goal natin, makapag-establish tayo ng ganong connection. Fourth step is engage. Shift from talking about yourself towards their own interest and story. So be attentive and listen to their life questions, concerns, and life issues. Magagamit natin dyan sa ating material yung uh, problem and solution and response dialogue na may kita sa page 5. Alright? And fifth step, present the gospel. Doon pa lang tayo mag-represent ng good news ng Panginoon sa bawat ito sa atin. Because Christ died for us and rose from the dead and prepare a place in heaven for us all. At pagkatapos nun, dapat maging familiar tayo sa five assurances of salvation na may kita nyo sa page 6. Grace, man, God, Christ, and faith. At susundan po natin yan ng two diagnostic questions for assessment. So last step natin, sixth step I follow up. Guide them to discover Jesus and have interest in reading the Bible. It's very important. No? Hindi tayo magkatapos na sa pag-share ng gospel. But we will walk with them, journey with them, and disciple them. At sa page 8 po, may kita niyo yung response form. It's very important na wag po natin makaligtaan na ilagay kung ano yung response nila. They, did they receive Christ or reject? Or deny muna. So, very helpful yun po sa atin para mapag-train natin yung mga contacts. Okay? Don't forget to share with them several resources that may help them grow spiritually. So, yun po yung ating six simple steps on how to share the gospel online. So, pray and commit. Connect. Disclose. Engage. Present the gospel and follow up. So I hope everyone would uh, join the Global Outreach 2020. The goal of Go 2020 is to mobilize 100 million believers to reach 1 billion people because everyone can reach someone and together we can reach the world. And always remember 
Do not be afraid to share the gospel because the Holy Spirit is with you and will empower you. So go KBCF, go 2020, God bless us all.